could. No, that's nice. Real nature, nice. Uh, yeah. The Reverend here. I was actually camping. You too. I like that. Those temples. Yeah, that was pretty cool. Beach clothes. That's, oh, that's, that's a good idea. idea. All right. Apologize for getting started a little, a little late here. We had a meeting right before this one, so we're going to call the meeting for order, to order. If everyone would please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance to our flag and then remain standing for a moment of silence as we remember those in our community that have lost a, a loved one. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, thank you. We could have roll call. Well, <coughs> when you're ready, have roll call. Kelsey Here. Ross? Here. To Salcido? Here. Tobin? Here. And Mayor Kunz. Here. Thank you. Mark me here, but I'm voting by absentee. All right. Cool. Well, good evening, everyone. We have uh, a big day tomorrow, as our city clerk has been has been telling us. Um, tomorrow is the the primaries, right? Tomorrow's primary primaries election. Open. Yep. The polls will be open. Seven a.m. Do you want to give um, want instructions? To? Yes, please go ahead. Polls open tomorrow morning at seven a.m. They're open until eight p.m. All of our regular polling locations are open. Um, everybody should have gotten a new voter ID card recently, so everybody should be able to look at those and see where their polling location is. Come on out to the polls. We're we're ready to go. Okay. Very good. And that is all day, all day tomorrow. And speaking of, uh, of votes, I got notice from the Honorable Gretchen Whitmer that our uh, proposed levy has been approved to go on the ballot in um, November, and that would be the renewal of the police and, and fire millage. So that is a good thing. Mm -hmm. Community Improvement Commission has uh, an event coming up this coming, I think it's Sunday, no, it's Saturday, Saturday, August 6th, and it is the garden tour or walk as you, uh, you may remember it. It's a rekindling of that. It starts at uh, 10 o'clock at the Historical Museum where you can um, get a map of the the locations where there are I think there are, there are six this year to be visited and um, you can also leave a donation for the historical museum if you still so see fit so that is Saturday and there's another event coming up in August that uh, we need you to uh, get behind folks and it's going to be a celebrating of 70 years of Lincoln Park Little League now if you've played in Little League in Lincoln Park, or you were a coach, or you were a manager, or you know, even a sponsor for, for that. Um, come on out, because we're going to have a little bit of a, of a game put together by you know all the, the people that uh, come out, the past players. You don't have to bring equipment because the equipment will be there. It'll just be uh, so. It'll be the LP Little League alumni ball game at 11 a.m. at Quant Park. And if you're interested in playing in the game, you need to check in by 10.30 a.m. And then there'll be an all-alumni gathering, 1 p.m. to 3 p.m. on the grounds of the Historical Museum. So, and again, any former players and coaches are in, invited. So there's no uh, real rules right now for how the teams are going to be set up. We'll, we'll go with how many people show up and then, um, I guess make the selections as a, as it goes, but it should be it should be a fun afternoon. So if you've had anything to do with uh, Little League in the past in the city of Lincoln Park, come out and celebrate uh, the 70th anniversary for that. Oh, 
Okay. Let the magical hand come. Now, there's been a, another release from um, the Wayne County Health Department. Um, it is not a big deal right now, um, but it may turn out to be uh, a big deal. Since the county has put the information out, and I'm going to relay it to, to all of you folks, I think that there are only um, 10 cases in the uh, state of Michigan, according to what the fire chief said a little bit earlier. Is that correct? 29 cases in, uh, in Michigan, 11 in Wayne County, 10 of those being in Detroit City. 29 in Michigan, 11 in Wayne County, 10 being in uh, in Detroit. So thanks, Chief Prince, for bringing that. But we'll just uh, as we'll just go over this monkeypox vaccine. Um, the vaccine is recommended for people 18 and older at high risk for um, M for monkeypox infection. Uh, the vaccine has been approved by in the U.S. for the prevention of MPV or monkeypox and smallpox. Experts believe that they can be an effective tool to help prevent if given within four days of exposure or reduce severity of illness if given within 14 days after an exposure. Um, who is eligible? Uh, due to a very limited vaccine supply in Michigan, the vaccine is prioritized at this time to those who meet one of the following criteria. One, you are over 18 years old and were exposed within the last 14 days, or you had a close physical or sexual contact with somebody who was diagnosed with monkeypox, or two, you are 18 plus years old, identify as gay, bisexual, or other man, or transgender, or gender non-conforming and gender non-binary person who has had sex with men in the last 14 days have had intimate or sexual contact with multiple or anonymous sex partners or three you are 18 plus years old and within the last 14 days you have close physical or sexual contact with other individuals in a setting where there may have been cases of the monkeypox if you do not meet these criteria you're not currently eligible for for that if you need um if you need to make an appointment, you can do so at the Out County, Out Wayne County. You call the Wayne County Health Department, and we'll put this number up tomorrow. It's 1-866-610-3885, Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. to uh, to 4 p.m. Again, if necessary, we want to get on that early, um, start preventative measures. Uh, had a nice time this weekend over at uh, the event that we had, which is Art in the Park. Um, the good crowds on Friday and, and Saturday. I know that the vendors were, were happy. I know Councilwoman Marie Tobin had had a lot to do with the setup. I think I don't hear any 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 complaints. It was just a, um, a nice a nice time in the in the park, which is what it what it should have been. With that, then I will jump to uh, consent agenda, which is resolved that the following items listed on the consent agenda be approved as presented to the Mayor and City Council. One, approved minutes, regular meeting held July 18, 2022. Two, approved minutes, study session, RE DPS manpower held July 18, 2022. Three, support Senior Alliance multi year plan. Four, special event, LPHS band car wash. So moved. Okay. Clerk, call the roll. Council Prisons Dupre? Yes. Tobin? Yes. Higgins? Yes. Kelsey? Yes. Ross? Yes. Salcedo? Yes. And Mayor Carnes? Yes. This is, this is, this is All right, bear with me for a second. Thank you. First action item is a, um, I don't know what the proper verbiage was, but carried over from, from last meeting. And whereas the Dangerous Building and Code Appeals Board issued an order to demolish the structure located at 15744th Street, 
Said order being issued subsequent to a hearing of the facts pertaining to this matter identified as DBB number 1606, which was held on May 26, 2022, in accordance with section 1444.04 of the codified ordinances of the City of Lincoln Park. Whereas the Dangerous Building and Code of Appeals Board has filed a report of its findings and a copy of its order with this mm -hmm. council and with each party having recorded interest in the subject property. And whereas the City Council has established the date of July 18, 2022, the date for a hearing to review the findings and order of said board, the owner or party of interest having given uh, the opportunity to show cause why said why said the structure should not be demolished and council having duly held such hearing. Now therefore be resolved that said order of the dangerous building and code appeals board to demolish and remove the structure located at 1574 4th Street, Lincoln Park, Michigan is hereby approved by the council of the city of Lincoln Park and be it further resolved that the director of public works is hereby directed to comply with the order of the board as approved by the council after 20 days from the date of this resolution and be it further resolved that the director of public works shall determine the date of demolition and shall notify each party of interest as required by section 1444.10 of the codified ordinances and be it further resolved that the cost of the demolition shall be assessed against the real property in which said structure is located such costs shall be reported to the city assessor who shall report said lien who shall place said lien so moved Support. Support. Okay. Um, in discussion for this, um, I'll stand at the mic in case you need any further direction or questions. <laughs> well, show me to yell from behind everybody's back, Mayor. It's whatever. You well, do. I've been um, um, our DDA director and EDC um, director, Carl Wise. Now, Initially, the it was to be referred to the DDA mm -hmm. for um, for conversations on that. Carl, would you please relate the um, what the DDA reported? Yes, um, in accordance with uh, what we laid out at the last council meeting, uh, we did reschedule a meeting of the DDA that had to be canceled the week prior because of a lack of quorum. We had that meeting last Tuesday. Uh, I was not able to attend in person because of uh, family issues, but uh, I participated uh, with the five members that were in attendance. There was quite a lengthy discussion about the property, and to get to the bottom line, the DDA did not want to uh, get involved uh, with any degree of heavy financing uh, to address the issue before you. Uh, the DDA did mention that if uh, by some chance uh, a legitimate project came forward, uh, they might entertain our um, downtown facade grant program, but that was about the extent of it. Okay, so since then, I'll report to you that I have had a conversation with a gentleman that uh, the city uh, has executed a sale of real estate to in the past. Uh, his name, of course, is P.D. Danek, uh, D-A-N-D-N-A-I-K. He's the fellow that uh, uh, made the proposal to purchase from the city uh, another property on Fort Street and actually one on Dix Avenue, but the one on Fort Street is 2215 to 2225. Uh, I think you're all familiar with that. My point is that um, I talked with uh, Mr. Danik and I also met uh, out at the site with uh, Piyush Anam who's his contract uh, manager. Um, they both uh, either over tabletop, and in the case of Paiu, she was out at the site, he took a look at the building, wanted to confirm a few things. Bottom line with this is that I understand that uh, they are interested in the property uh, that would be to purchase it and rehabilitate it. Uh, they, as I understand it, have tendered an offer to the property owner, Mr. Um, 
uh, excuse me, I forgot his name, but he's part of the record already. And um, I, you know, I don't know what the status is of the offer or anything of that nature. Um, you know, I also understand that um, you're probably going to have to take some kind of action uh, because this thing has been lingering on for so long. Uh, there might be, and maybe your attorney can speak to this, but there might be a period of time uh, between any action you would take this evening uh, to see if the uh, uh, purchase offer and the project would uh, ferment and become viable, at which time you might be able to rescind or pause any of the action you take this evening. Uh, so that's kind of where we're at. I know uh, Leslie Lynch Wilson, who's on the DDA, uh, she, you know, um, you know, she has she understands, you know, the decision or non-decision of the DDA, yet uh, she is uh, a local expert in historic preservation and the like. I think you've met her before and, you know, seen her causes. She's here this evening as well, and if you would, you might want to give her an opportunity to speak to the project. I haven't shared any of this information on this proposed purchase uh, with Leslie, so, you know, that's news to her as, as well as to you. That was something that took the course of the day to accomplish. Um, and again, the property owner is here this evening. You, you, know, you might be able to ask him to validate that he did receive a proposal, if, if that's something he's considering. Okay? Any other questions? Thank you, sir. You're welcome. Thank you. This is Ed, would you yes, sir. comment on that, please? Well, council's being asked this evening, Mayor and Council, to affirm the decision of the Dangerous Buildings Board and Code of Appeal. Oh, use the microphone. Right. Yep. Mr. Mayor is in conformance with his obligation, presented to Council the decision of the Board, asked Council to affirm it. Council has prerogatives beyond an affirmation today, which those of you who have been here more than a decade will recall has been done in the past. You can affirm and confirm the order today. There's a 21-day appellate period to Wayne County Circuit Court. This building is not coming down in 21 days or 41 days or 61 days based upon timing. If something's underway, they've come back to council in the past and asked you to either stay or modify the order or to suspend the order if there's something there, including the requirement of a surety bond. We've gone to circuit court. They filed an appeal. The circuit court has allowed the posting of a bond and set the amount of a bond. So if it's truly an endeavor that warrants some consideration by council and the public and the other joint efforts here, preservationists and the DDA or whomever in saving the building, there's still that opportunity. But the point is you can't, in, in my opinion, just leave the order of the, the board on the table here again indefinitely. You should either affirm or reverse it or just kick the can down the road, and, and that's really what happened in nine, uh, 2017. It happened here in 1917, too, but in 2017. So I think what Mr. Byers would like you to do is to say yes or no to what he asked you to do here today, and then you can still change that. If there's earnest effort, earnest money, and an honest attempt to correct things, you can still make that move. Okay. Well, it's, a, it's a policy decision, and that's what you as mayor and council do is make policy here. Okay. Through the chair? Yes, sir. Go ahead. Can I ask, Ed, could we limit it a certain amount of time for it to come back? Well, right now it's 21 days, and that's what the order is. So you issue the order. It's like any judge's decision. You're acting as a tribunal today, and they've got 21 days to appeal. I would imagine that if there were an earnest money offer and Mr. H.P. Snap came down here and asked you to hold off on the order to withdraw the order or to do something like that in a 21-day period, you could do that. But irrespective of that, once the order's in, you can then either petition for a stay or a modification. But there's one order in front of you today, and it's fixed, repair, demolish 21 days. And that's what Mr. Myers is asking you to do, just to get this off of dead center. Thank you. Further discussion? Yes, sir, you wish to be here? Okay. 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 Mi nombre es César Escobedo, soy el dueño del edificio 1574 de la Forest Street. Uh, my name is Cesar Escobedo, I'm the owner of 1574 Forest Street, and I'm Cesar Escobedo Jr., the translator. Thank you. Este, estuvimos uh, analizando 
La propuesta de la compra del edificio que nos consiguió CAR. Uh, we were analyzing the proposal for the, the offer to sell to the, the client that Carl uh, talked about earlier. Este, tenemos también otro, otro cliente potencial que nos lo quiere comprar. Es una compañía hispana, se llama, eh, ¿cuál es el nombre? Es Commerce, eh, no, es Detroit Cash, Detroit for Cash. In other words, we also have another offer from another a different company called Detroit for Cash LLC. Um, we have here a commercial purchase letter of intent as well. Um, Esta compañía, aparte de este negocio que tienen, tienen diferentes, tiene un realtor, un realtor, tiene compañía de construcción, tiene compañía de plomería. Ellos uh, pueden pueden edificar pronto el, el edificio. Uh, this buyer is, uh, they have uh, various businesses. They have uh, construction, plumbing, um, and stuff like that for construction. Y, bueno, yo hablando con el dueño de la compañía, me dijo que se comprometía en hacerlo lo más pronto posible para arreglar el edificio y ponerlo a código. And in talking to the owner of this, uh, this business, he said he, would, um, he was interested in buying the property and fixing it up as soon as possible. Uh -huh. Este, y en la propuesta me dice que él compraría el edificio para los primeros de septiembre. And in this commercial purchase letter of, uh, um, purchase letter of intent, uh, he states that he would be interested in, in buying the business, uh, buying the building by, sep by early September. Y si en caso de estas propuestas no funcionaran, pues yo tengo dinero para tratar de rescatarlo, tengo alrededor de unos... 25 mil dólares para empezar a, a constru la construcción si, si en caso no se puede hacer la venta. En caso de que el purchaser um, it doesn't go through or anything like that, I do have uh, about 25 like around 25 to 30 thousand dollars to try to uh, repair it up to code. Espero que nos den la oportunidad de rescatar el edificio. Se me ha complicado mucho, la verdad. Yo no, nunca había tenido un edificio, no sabía cómo funciona todo aquí, entonces me confío en unas personas que realmente obraron mal y, y pues me puede bastante porque era una ilusión que tenía yo tener un negocio aquí. Uh, I hope you, you would give us the opportunity to either sell or try to repair the building. Uh, it was my first building trying to um, have here in Lincoln Park. Uh, got guided by people that didn't, I guess they didn't give me good advice, uh, but it would be Appreciate it if we could get the opportunity. Sería todo por hoy. Gracias. That'd be all. Thank you. Is, uh, is uh, yeah. do you need the, the letter of intent? Uh, no, I, I don't. No. Uh, John Myers. Just, um, you've looked over 1574. I'm just not, I'm interested in just what your opinion is to, to bring that to where it could be an operational building or to cover the, the violations that we're talking about. Anything can, it's been existing, has the ability to be rebuilt if you have enough money. But to do this project again, it would have to be completely um, architecturally sealed drawings of a complete layout and rebuild because of the description even that was given to you uh, in the last meeting by uh, members in the EDC account. Those destructive pieces will have to be redesigned, relayed out, the layout of the bathrooms, facilities, the shower, uh, the, uh, f the furnace room facilities, how that's going to be designed, entry levels, all those will have to be put back together since it's been vacated and, demo and, and, and deteriorating at such degree levels for the last seven years. Um, it'll need to start with a set of, a sealed set of drawings. Um, from there, we'll be able to plan review that, and from there, we'll give him a cost evaluation. He can give us a cost evaluation, what it would meet that plan review to be built out from that point of view. The, co the building department's uh, putting this on in front of you uh, does have a restriction of, of a six-month guideline for uh, starting and finishing a renovation fix and repair to get it to a certificate of, of approval. And then it can be a blank building um, with all the essential responsible 
pieces of it, waiting for a, com a client to, to fill it. And then it would start again with a certificate of occupancy. Okay, is there, what would be the cost of demolition? I don't know the current cost. I know the last one we took down in this city, in this district, uh, which would have been four years ago, uh, was somewhere around 16, just short of $17,000. Okay. Thank you, sir. Further discussion, reference? Yes, ma'am, go ahead. Russell Lynch Wilson, um, I'd like to ask you um, to um, give the opportunity to save the building. It's good news tonight that there's several um, potential buyers. Um, as chair of the design committee, I think it's for the DDA, it's counterproductive to have this building demolished because DDAs are all about um, are actually charged with development redevelopment of their downtown areas and from an urban planning standpoint it's crucial that this 20-foot wide building remains so that the foot traffic in this block is not reduced and as I stated at the last meeting downtowns need blocks of continuous what they call street walls continuous buildings to increase foot traffic as opposed to be dissected by vacant lots and parking lots and this is a key block for DDA development and we know this is not a dangerous building per the structural engineers report and being a gutted building, this isn't really enough reasons to demo because gut rehabs are very common in commercial construction, especially in retail and office buildings, um, which sort of brings back memories to me because my mom was a registered architect and urban planner. So as a kid living in northern New Jersey, I used to get dragged around to different um, construction sites because she did bank design for a while, freelancing for a Philadelphia um, um, company that did bank interiors so my brother and I would get dragged around to these construction sites and I recall like this was like 1965 so I was like five but I recall that these banks it, were at the stage where there were only exterior walls with studs concrete floors and ceiling which is exactly what 1574 fort is right now except for you know the needed repairs that are what was listed in the structural engineers r report and there is a cost to demolition because in addition to the demolition costs, there's also added costs of maintenance of a vacant lot. Property taxes are less for vacant lots versus buildings. So I hope that you will give Mr. Escobedo uh, opportunity to um, um, save the building so this can get renovated to a new use because we certainly can use an additional business along there. Thank you. Further discussion? To the chair, if I may. Yep. Uh, and I guess address this to John, even though he's sitting down. John, what would be the optimum time to say that this has to go forward? In other words, does the person have to come up with the drawings at least by a certain period of time to show intent or the customer who's buying it has to at least come and say hey i'm willing to pay it and move it forward uh, i guess it's this thing's been dragging on as i don't know when and the dda doesn't have the wherefore to do it money wise and all that but where do we draw the line i guess how much time what would be the time frame if, if According we to the building department's ordinance of dangerous building code and ordinances, the, once you make a decision at the council level to fix and repair, my responsibility is within that 21 days is to give them a notice of what is their legal responsibilities to put that building back in order in front of us and be in compliance with it. That makes that 66 months. And so that would mean if there's nothing that occurs between the first 21 days and we put the letter out in front of the owner uh, or the present or, uh, the, or the current at that time uh, possible um, new owner, 
he still needs or she needs to comply with set of drawings, commission, completion of application, a completion of permits, and completion of a certificate of, comp of approval at the end of a six month cycle. Would, through the chair, to yep. John, if we <laughs> upheld this demolition, because you got 20 some days and I think Ed said something that could be a little, a little longer. Would that give the client at least the, <coughs> the ability to show intent before this goes any further or is that too short a period of time? No, the 21 days, Councilman, means the city can't do anything for the next 21 days. There's another option and I don't intend to glean what your policy is here or to pretend that I'm a diplomat offering an alternative. If council really wants to give a foreign opportunity to come back with something positive, you can modify the order today ordering that a plan be presented to council for saving the structure within, and I would say 28 days, based upon the best representation they did, and then to revisit to affirm the rest of the order to take effect 28 days from today, which would put you right past Labor Day. In fact, your meeting, I believe, would be the Tuesday after Labor Day, and that would give you the opportunity, and that's when the 21-day period would start. So you could modify the order. You have all that power as counsel. But it's something that you don't want to let sit, but in terms of diplomacy, five years, four weeks, I mean, who's counting at this yeah. point? Unless you think it's indeed, and Mr. Myers convinces you this evening, that the building needs to come down now because it's tumbling down. Understand one thing on behalf of council, that you look at this in the best light to all parties, and there's something meretricious, but the analogy one bright city attorney drew decades ago is your mother's on life support, then you all decide to go visit her, and you have to draw that parallel here and decide where are you moving, you're going to keep her on life support, or what are you going to do? And councils should make a decision one way or the other, and I have no problem in supporting that order if you went to circuit court, giving them four weeks to come with the appropriate plans, and on the four weeks from that day have the order take effect on the second, would that be, what day would that be, Mr. Manager, the first meeting of, or September Madam Clerk, 6th. September 6th, on the 6th of September. So that gives them approximately five weeks to come back with something hard and concrete for you here. And it's not that I'm looking to work or not work with all the divergent interests here, because you all should combine to have the correct interest, which is to make downtown safe and beautiful. And that's your policy decision. But if you'd like to do that, you can do that here. If you really want to give them a chance, that's your opportunity. It's like what we used to call the last clear chance doctrine. Thank, thank you, Mr. Myers and Ed. Thank you. I'm all set. Through the chair? Yes. I'm going to be honest and, and just say that I like Ed's modification. I don't like the idea of a hole that being there, and it's so narrow. Um, I don't, I can't help but think that if this would have come to, to, this information of the buyers would have come before the dangerous building boards, then we may not have this resolution before us. So I, I would like to give them some extra time. That's a resolution? You have to modify it, the resolution. Modify the... Move to amend. Yes, support. move to amend. Is, is that, John, is 21 days or 28 days, is that enough time for drawings? Well, no, it's not enough time for drawings. But, no, but for, for, for a proposal. I'm sorry for, for Apologies. No, you're good. Ed. That's what I meant to say. For it gives them the opportunity to come back. They mentioned a plan within four weeks. And this, theoretically, if I'm adding right, Madam Clerk, it's five weeks. It is. And have the order take effect that day, then they still have 21 days. I mean, it's like final jeopardy. I'd support her amendment, Your Honor. Oh, okay. So does the mover and supporter accept that? I don't know who moved to support, but they accept. I moved it. You have no problem with that? Yeah, I don't want to do it. So what do I say then? Ed? Just well, they, okay. they move on. Well, you vote on the amendment first then. Okay. 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 All right. So discussion on the amendment then. For the chair. Uh, yes, sir. Yes, uh, Leslie brought up a good point. Also, Ms. Ross also, I don't want to see a vacant building or vacant lot between two buildings. However, I don't want to see next December that the new owners ain't doing nothing with the building. So let's move forward. It's not in a neighborhood where there's uh, children playing next door. It's downtown. Let's preserve the building. 
let's give everyone a chance so that's why I'm in support of this amendment okay further discussion on the amendment through the, yeah, the only thing I would through the chair excuse me the only thing I would say is John Myers is quite articulate about what it's going to take to do this building I don't see it happening and I think for a, a lack of stealing a, a, a phrase from bed kicking it down the can down the streets not going to get it I mean I'd love to do it but but no thank you through the chair yes sir. I, I just think that uh, where, where I, I agree that, that the building in, in its present form is in horrible shape and needs to go but uh, the hole that it would put in our downtown area um, will never be filled it's not big enough to even put a parking lot there it's not big enough that any one is ever going to invest any money into that no one's going to build another building there so if we're voting to leave a lot there then we're voting for a lot that's going to be there empty probably for the rest of our known existence so I, I would have to say that I'd, I'd, I'm been willing to give them at least 30 days to give them a look at this okay further discussion on the amendment clerk call the roll councilpersons Ross yes Salcedo yes Dupre yes Higgins yes Kelsey no Tobin? No. And Mayor Kearns? Yes. So next we would um, have further discussion on the resolution as amended. Then uh, I get clerk call the roll. Council Persons Kelsey? Uh, no. <laughs> Higgins? Yes. Dupre? Yes. Ross, could you read that again, please? Yeah, that's, yeah. The original resolution as amended to as 28 amended. days. Yes. Salcedo? Yes. Tobin? No. And Mayor Carnes? Yes. <clears throat> okay. So next we have. And in um, in background from Liz Gundon, our planner of record, uh, City of Lincoln Park wishes to rezone the property at 2121 Dix Highway to correct split zoning on the lot located on the east side of Dix Highway between Philomene Boulevard to the north and White Avenue to the south from single family residential district SR. SFRD and the Municipal Business District, MBD, to Municipal Business District. The site was previously used as a sit-down restaurant, Pizza Hut, but has been vacant for, for some time. This property currently consists of two zoning districts rather than one, and the back of the parcel is zoned residential. This uh, likely represents an oversight during the permitting process for Pizza Hut. That is where the building sits and now is clearly host to commercial use. So resolve an ordinance to conditionally amend the official zoning map, chapter 1266.02 of the City of Lincoln Park with respect to the rezoning of parcel ID number 45010-02-0080-0. -0080 more commonly known as 2121 Dix, be given its first and second reading. The City of Lincoln Park ordains that the zoning ordinance for the City of Lincoln Park, specifically the zoning map of the city, with respect to zoning classifications of the property known as parcel number 45-001-010-02-0080, Eight zero as zero zero three, commonly known as two one two one Dix, shall be rezoned from municipal business district and single family residential district to municipal business district. So move. Support. Support. Discussion. 
clerk call the roll. Council Persons Higgins? Yes. Tobin? Yes. Dupre? Yes. Kelsey? Yes. Ross? Yes. Salcedo? Yes. And Mayor Carnes? Yes. Next item has a cover letter from Carl Weiss. Wish our um, DPS, not DPS, our DDA and EDC director. Advise on behalf of the Lincoln Park Downtown Development Authority, the City of Lincoln Park has been awarded ARPA funding from Wayne County Government for the project referenced above, which is the um, development of a downtown fitness park. With an amount up to $124,865. Um, this funding is crucial to filling the funding gap in the current project budget. Uh, moreover, Wayne County official vast that the Okay. If approved, be signed with uh, due haste. So resolved that the Mayor and City Council hereby accept an award of American Rescue Plan Act of 2021 from the Carter County of Wayne, Michigan, in the amount not to exceed $124,865 to fund the development of the Downtown Fitness Park and to be implemented by the Lincoln Park Downtown Development Authority. It further resolved that the Mayor and City Court be authorized to sign the contract entitled Subsipient Agreement between the Charter County of Wayne and the City of Lincoln Park for the development of Downtown Fitness Park and all pertinent contract documents related here too. So move. Support. Discussion. I have a question. Um, is this funding, um, is this the only funding needed to get this off, to get this going? I mean, are we using any other funds besides this money? Well, there are, there are, um, Carl, if you can talk, I didn't, there's at least two other grants that yeah. I'm aware of. Thank you. Um, the, the short answer is yes, this fills the financial gap. But as the mayor mentioned, there, there were two awards uh, that council didn't have to take action on uh, $30,000 30, through the national fitness campaign and then another $20,000 through another um, financial organization or excuse me health and fitness organization that contributed. Uh, the DDA has already made uh, a first payment on the equipment package uh, that was about $56,000 and change. So some of the, the DDA funds were used. Uh, this will fill the gap. This means that we do not need to uh, go through an amendment process specifically for the outdoor fitness court using any CARES Act funding. So, um, you know, so that, that kind of clears the, uh, the deck on that. By the way, as an aside, um, I've been working with Joan uh, Krieg and we've uh, had some conversations with uh, a consulting firm uh, or, or uh, uh, what do you call it uh, you know <laughs> I'm sorry I'm going blank of uh, you know a firm that that develops uh, <laughs> uh, geographic information systems and they've accumulated a package of existing data sources and uh, other data that they collected and they put it all into one uh, program and uh, it, it, in my estimation, uh, has enough information to uh, appropriately address the methodology that you would want to follow to figure out what the digital divide means here in Lincoln Park. Uh, it would have information that's available through federal sources on um, uh, hardware and systems that are available. Uh, it would also begin to dig into the reasons why lower income households may or may not have the wherewithal or not have the interest in becoming um, computer literate and accessing the internet. So from soup to nuts, uh, this uh, site and this company that we're talking with could be the answer to answering the question that you need to know before even a nickel is spent on um, uh, digital divide or broadband or what, whatever you want to call it. So uh, this agreement helps us accomplish all of that and take the pressure off of the CARES Act funding. 
Okay, and this is from Wayne County. This is a Lincoln Park money, correct? Okay, that's it. Yeah. And what would you be if this is accepted? What would be your timeline for completion? Okay. <laughs> um, the um, I have to purchase the property. There's a bunch of federal regulations that you have to follow when you start uh, buying uh, sites. Uh, that's probably going to take uh, 30 days to accomplish. Um, I've had conversations, of course, with um, through the DDA to a contractor who uh, generously indicated that he might be able to help. Uh, if we can get that done, uh, meeting all the uh, federal design guidelines and so forth, I'm figuring that will get in the ground in about another 30 days, and the equipment package then would be uh, installed shortly thereafter. I'm having meetings uh, with the NFC people on a weekly basis now. They're asking the same questions. Uh, they're, they're very uh, understanding of the financial issue, and uh, you know they're, they're pleased. They heard about this grant, and they're ver very excited that we can start to make some tracks in the ground for this project. So just the short answer is I think we'll have something installed and in the ground uh, probably at the beginning of October. Any further discussion? Yeah, through the chair to Carl. That you said something about we gave you or gave one hundred twenty-five thousand out of the CARES Act. I think you explained that, but could you yeah, enlighten that, me more? Yeah, okay. That was an allocation uh, to help create outdoor scenes in front of or to the side of existing businesses that want to. Uh, uh, you have some outdoor dining or uh, kibitzing, you know, uh, letting people outside to drink drinks. And I'm talking about beverages, right, not alcohol. Um, so that, you know, we haven't put that program together. Uh, my lungs aren't <laughs> deep enough to have carry that much oxygen. But that's something that we'll be doing very shortly. Um, also, I wanted to point out that Part of the question with the Fort Street right away, and that's where we're talking about using these funds, has to do with having our um, conceptual plans finished for the Fort Street corridor and the Southfield Road corridor, which the consultants are writing right now. In fact, I just got an email today that indicates that there's a draft of both reports for me to look at. That's important because when we go to MDOT to talk to them about it, uh, assisting businesses to install these outdoor venues, they're going to want to know where the heck is um, Fort Street headed. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's all, there's a lot of moving parts, uh, but the cogs are starting to mesh, and it's all good. Okay. Thank you. Thank You're you welcome. Honor. Further discussion? <clears throat> Clerk called roll, please. Councilperson Higgins? Yes. Ross? Yes. Dupre? Yes. Kelsey? Yes. Salcedo? Yes. Tobin? Yes. And Mayor Carnes? Yes. Next item has a cover letter from our city manager and um, subject being approval to purchase tax reverted properties. In background, when the county forecloses on a property due to delinquent taxes, it must offer the city in which the property resides the opportunity of first right of refusal. This year, the county foreclosed on a total of 15 properties. Of the 15 properties, two currently have orders of demolition will be thus as packaged as blighted properties, and the city will gain possession of them outside of the first right of refusal program. Six of the other properties are vacant lots. Um, the city is recommending exercising our first right of refusal for the remaining seven properties. It is the staff's intention to bundle five of the seven properties, all residential, to be sold to a developer who will renovate and then sell them to the to be owner occupied. The DDD executive director has expressed interest in the property located within the DDA district, 1422 Southfield Road. Finally, the CWG program expressed interest in renovating one of the residential properties using CWG funds. So the resolution. It resolves that the mayor and council approve the purchase of the below listed right of first refusal properties from Wayne County for a total cost of $121,310.40, 4037 Irene, 4064 Coolidge, 
4190 Coolidge, 1414 Mill, 2981 Ferris, 1453 Buckingham, and 1422 Southfield. Be a further resolved that funds for the purchase are to come from account number 101-923-975. I'll move. Support. Discussion? Good question, Your Honor. James, yes. what's the potential uh, profit for the city if everything goes into place? Well, we're really not supposed to make a profit on the program. Um, the program, yeah, we're, we're supposed to just get our uh, purchase price and costs uh, refunded so to us. Can even as our goal. Yes. Thank you. Mr. Chair. Yes, ma'am. What is the reasoning behind selling the five properties as a bundle, as a, adverse to selling them to different people? It forces the developer to buy all of them and not cherry pick only the good ones. As a, so if one of them is in much rougher shape than the rest, if we're individually selling them, um, we might get stuck with the one that's in the worst shape. Thank you. Okay, further discussion? Yeah, through the chair. I see that the DDA is interested in 1422 Southfield. What's are they going to buy it? Are they going to reimburse it for the city, or how does that work? I know about the other properties because they're going to be. We've done that before, and then had them. Yeah, they had been a discussion. Was that um, we would turn the the property over to the DDA? Why would we do that? Because we would lose it, right? What do you mean? Well. What is the 1422? Is it a building, vacant land, or? It is a building. Oh, okay. Well, that's what I'm kind of figuring out. We're basically, what we're doing is we're buying a building for the DDA. Uh, not buying it. We're spending a dollar for the DDA. Am I correct? The, the DDA will eventually purchase it. Okay. Well, that's what I was asking. Yeah. Which way it was going. Okay. All right. Thank you. Further discussion? Through the chair. Yes, sir. Um, uh, I'm assuming all these lots are all buildable lots. All have all been double checked. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they are buildable. Um, only one of those residential lots that we're recommending doesn't currently have a building on it, but it is buildable. Okay. Okay. Further discussion. Clerk, call the roll. Council persons Ross? Yes. Dupre? Yes. Higgins? Yes. Kelsey? Yes. Salcedo? Yes. Excuse Tobin? Me. Yes. And Mayor Carnes? Yes. Next item has a cover letter from Chief Fairwater to the Police Department. And it has to do with the contract between the City of Lincoln Park and the Lincoln Park School Board for school resource officers. Uh, this contract renews our previous agreement from 2020 allowing two full-time police officers to work in the Lincoln Park schools. The school board will continue to pay a portion of the wages and benefits for both officers. This agreement has been beneficial for both the Lincoln Park Police Department and the Lincoln Park School Board. These officers provide both safety and a positive role model to the, to the students. Resolved that the mayor and council approve and renew the police liaison agreement between the Lincoln Park School Board and the City of Lincoln Park. Be it further resolved that mayor and city clerk are authorized to execute the liaison agreement. So move. Support. Support. Discussion? Clerk, call the roll. Council Persons Higgins? So move. Yeah. Ross? Yes. yes. Dupre? Yes. Kelsey? Yes. Salcedo? Yes. Tobin? Yes. And Mayor Kearns? Oh, Lord. Next item has a cover letter from uh, Michael Prince, our fire chief, an approval to uh, send to auction the vehicle. Uh, the 1997 South Penn fire truck is an old unused piece of fire apparatus. It is no further use. The fire department it is currently being stored at the DPS yard with um, insurance. The auction house of Richie Brothers, Richie Brothers in Carleton would like to us to sell. So whereas the City of Lincoln Park would like to dispose of one old fire truck, E41-1997 Sutton, then 1S9A1BLD7W100394, be resolved the mayor and council declare this used fire truck to be surplus equipment and hereby direct the 
fire chief to enter in enter it in the next available heavy equipment auction at Ritchie Brothers Auctioneers, 10101 Telegraph Road, Carlton, Michigan. Proceeds from the sale shall be placed in account number 661-932. Uh, 64900 in parentheses sale of used equipment out of parentheses. So moved. Support. Uh, discussion? Court call the roll. Council Persons Dupre? Yes. Tobin? Yes. Higgins? Yes. Kelsey? Yes. Ross? Yes. Salcedo? Yes. And Mayor Carnes? Yes. All right. Next item has a cover letter from John Kazua, DPS Director. Tennessee Engineers Incorporated on behalf of the City of Lincoln Park DPS solicited bids for the 2022 Sewer Pipe Planning Program and on July 5, 2022, City awarded this contract to Inliner Solutions LLC. Now the City must award the Construction Inspection and Construction Administration for oversight of this work. In order to make the SRF eligible, we must award this prior to the SRF loan closure date in August 2022. Um, Based on Inliner Solutions LLC contract award on July 5, their submitted estimates schedule has 300 work days. So construction inspection, 300 days at 528 per day, $158,400. Construction administration, 2% at $48,388 for a total of $206,788. So be resolved that the Mayor and City Council authorize Hennessy Engineers Incorporated to perform construction inspection and construction administration for the 2022 Sanitary Sewer Pipelining Program at a cost not to exceed $206,788. Funds that come from the City of Lincoln Park Clean Water State Revolving Fund, SRF, account number 592-527-821000. Okay, discussion. Court call the roll. Council Persons Ross? Yes. Higgins? Yes. Dupre? Yes. Kelsey? Yes. Salcedo? Yes. Tobin? Yes. And Mayor Kearns? Yes. Next item is also from our DPS director, Mr. Kazoo. Background, Hennessy Engineers Incorporated on behalf of the City of Lincoln Park DPS solicited bids for the 2022 Sewer Cleaning and Televised Investigation. And on July 5, 2022, the City awarded the contract to Safeway Transportation out of Romulus, Michigan. Now the City must award the Construction Inspection and Construction Administration for oversight of this work. In order to make this SRF eligible, we must award it prior to the SRF loan closing date in August of 2022. As a physical impact based on Safeway's transportation submitted estimated work schedule awarded on July 5, um, construction inspection 60 days at 528 per day, $31,600. Construction administration 2% at $4,980 for a total of $36,660. Be resolved that the Mayor and City Council authorize Hennessy Engineers Incorporated to perform construction inspection and construction administration for the 2022 Sanitary Sewer Pipe Cleaning and Televising Investigation Program at a cost not to exceed $36,660. Funds to come from the City of Lincoln Park's Clean Water State Revolving Fund, SRF account number 592-527-821000. So awesome. moved. Support. Discussion? Court call the roll. Council Persons Ross? Yes. Dupre? Yes. Higgins? Yes. Kelsey? Yes. Salcedo? Yes. Tobin? Yes. And Mayor Carnes? Yes. Next item has a cover letter from our DPS Director, John Kazoo. Last week, CRA learned of a new funding uh, opportunity for structural deficient poor bridges through the Infrastructure Investment and Jobs Act, IIJA, for a new competitive bridge improvement program. IIJA provides the funding for bridge replacement, rehab, preservation, protection, and construction as part of the IIJA bridge improvement program to modernize bridges and make them safer for all uses. MDOT revisited its priority list for a structural deficient slash poor bridges last week to see what the most compatible with the BIP criteria for bridge safety, traffic, cost benefits, etc. 
Lincoln Park has the following two bridges on this eligibility list. Harrison Boulevard, built in 1965, structure 12498. Emmons Boulevard, built in 1964, structure number 12500. If Michigan receives an award from IAJ Bridge Improvement Program, the City of Lincoln Park would only have to contribute 20% of the construction costs as matching funds to make our Harrison and Emmons bridges safer. So whereas the county road agencies of Michigan are responsible for 75% of the state's roads and 52% of the bridges, all of which are vital to Michigan's economic welfare and the safety of its residents and visitors. Whereas 59% of over 3,300 bridges under the county road agency control are in less than good condition. Whereas the Infrastructure Investment and Jobs Act, IAJA, provides funding for a bridge replacement, rehabilitation, preservation, protection, and construction as part of the IIJA Bridge Improvement Program to modernize bridges and make them safer for all users. Now, therefore, be it resolved, the City of Lincoln Park hereby pledges to provide 20% of the construction cost as matching funds for number 12498 Harrison Street over the south branch of the Ecorse River and number 12500 Emmons Street over the south branch of the Ecorse River if Michigan receives an award from the IIJA Bridge Improvement Program Fund. They further resolve that the preliminary engineering costs and construction engineering costs will not be assessed against the county. So moved. Support. Discussion? To the chair? Yes, sir. Um, says we're going to per, per give 20% of the construction, but wouldn't uh, Wynat also have to be come up with uh, some of that money? If the city is in receipt of this grant, yes, they would pay, the, pay their uh, share. So they would pay 10% of that construction cost, which would be splitting what our cost would be. Thank you. Is there any, John, any estimation on what this cost would be, the 20%? Not at this point in time. Uh, previously, we've estimated at approximately $1.3 million each. So $250,000 each, is that what we'd be looking at? Mathematically, yes, sir. And then, Mr. Kazan, is that something that we would be able to afford? We'd have to pull from other projects based on current funding. Because this, th I, I don't believe this was part of the original budget. No, it is not. If I could, if I get it. Hold on. The bridge on, on Emmons, I know, has been um, spoken about to be in a, not a good situation. I know that the, the Harrison Bridge is also in need, in need of repair. But go ahead. If I could, if I could expand a little bit. Approximately three years ago, the state of Michigan was looking at bundling bridges together. They were going to try this process. There's, they've done one bridge bundling package with six bridges and so far they've used that as a pilot program and I think that is it's uh, worked very well it's been a cost savings for the communities or the, I should say the counties the uh, other part is right now there's been federal money that has opened up for bridge bundling again the state does not have that grant money where we've been asked to be part of this because of the condition of our bridge. There's approximately 183 bridges in this package. So this is not a done deal. What this is, is they're trying to package this to provide it to the state of Michigan, or excuse me, to the federal government by August 3rd. And they wanted to know if Lincoln Park still wanted to be part of the process. Now we have also gone forward and supply, or not supply, but applied for critical bridge funding through the state of Michigan. Those will not be determined or announced until approximately September of this year. And the one we just talked about is not a done deal. This is something that the state is trying to apply for. So what, it, to me, it boiled down to is right now, if we get something through the state of Michigan, in September, 
we would have to pay the construction costs, administration uh, construction, or excuse me, design costs, construction administration costs, plus 5%. In this particular case, the design engineering and the construction engineering uh, would be inclusive in this grant, and the state of Michigan will determine through probably in our, uh, uh, I don't know if it's going to be a lottery design process or if it's going to be an FOP type process, but get one firm that will design 183 bridges and then build them and have oversight. So basically, it was 20% of that construction cost or 5% plus uh, construction or design administration or design costs and construction administration and it would probably be a little bit better if we were able to get this money through this bridge bundling process but again right now this does not cost us anything we still have the bridge uh, grants with the state of Michigan but I think if we were able to be part of this bundling package I, we don't know when it's going to come down if it comes down, but we still have the other fishing line in the water. Okay, further discussion? Court call the roll. Councilpersons Tobin? Yes. Ross? Yes. Dupre? Yes. Higgins? Yes. Kelsey? Yes. Salcedo? Yes. And Mayor Carnes? Yes. This item is from our Chief of Police, Raymond Waters. The Wood Park Police Department is requesting the council waive the bid process and grant the Police Department permission to purchase a new 2023 Ford Explorer from Signature Ford. In why the Police Department needs to replace Unit 410. This is a 2015 Dodge Charger that is getting high in mileage and beginning to need frequent repairs. Um, Signature Ford has provided the police department with a state bid quote of $46,809. And, okay. What is the Lincoln Park Police Department is requesting to purchase a 2023 Ford Explorer. It be resolved that the Mayor and Council authorize the police department to waive the bidding process and purchase a 2023 Ford Explorer for a total cost of $46,809 from Signature Ford, a qualifying state bid pricing dealership. We further resolve funds from the purchase of the 2023 Ford Explorer to come from the Police Department's Forfeiture Capital Account, number 265-320-983000.VH04. A move. I'll move. Support. Support. Discussion? Your Honor, I have a question. Yes, ma'am. On this one, um, are we getting the the service uh, warranty where you know where it does the oil changes and the chief is saying no no not. okay further discussion yeah question to the chair uh i see on the resolution it talks about a 2023 ford explorer from signature ford but on the one document from it talks about a 2022 Ford F-150 Super Crew 4x4 Plus responder pickup for the same price. Are we getting an Explorer or a pickup truck? F-150 pickup truck. Oh, okay. Because well, Explorer is dirt. That's what I asked. Yeah. Okay. So we're we're not okay. That's good it's, enough. It's for an F-150. It's F-150. Changed. All right. We will um, amend the resolution. Is it good with a supporter? Yes. Okay. Good catch. Further uh, further discussion? Clerk, call the roll. Mayor Carnes? Yes. Councilpersons Tobin? Yes. Dupre? Yes. <coughs> yes. Higgins? Yes. Kelsey? Yes. Ross? Yes. And Salcedo? Yes. All right. 
We move to accounts and claims payable. Um, the Blue Care Network and the Blue Cross Blue Shield has been um, paid ahead, check released for due date. The result that the accounts and claims payable for those items greater than $25,000 be approved as follows. Blue Care Network, August 2022 retiree med event plan, $36,865.15. Blue Cross Blue Shield, August 22 retiree med event plans, uh, retirees and actives, $161,674.10. Dura, May 2022 sewage user fees. July 2022 excess flow charges, $270,016.54. GLWA, May 2022 billing for water. West Highland Park debt, um, $208,366.85. Hennessy Engineers Incorporated, General Consulting, Retention Basin, Water Loss Leak Study, North Shore Sewer Repair, Everstream Metro Act, Dog Shelter Edition, City Hall HVAC, Lafayette Water Main, Concrete Suctioning, Emmons and Lincoln Pump Section, Road and Water Main Replacement Program, Asphalt Resurfacing Project, Utility Repair Program, $92,796.66. City Riverview, June 2022 Dumping Services, $32,096.07. St. Ander Bank, First Lease Payment for Two Street Sweepers, $92,445.77. I'll move. Um, go ahead. I'll move. Support. Okay. Discussion? Clerk, call the roll. Councilpersons Ross? Yes. Salcedo? Yes. Dupre? Yes. Higgins? Yes. Kelsey? Yes. Tobin? Yes. And Mayor Carnes? Yes. What time for a city manager's report, Mr. Kruzan? Yes, thank you, Mayor. Good evening, everybody. Um, in the interest of tonight being the night before an election, and um, I'm not going to, I don't have a whole long list here for everybody tonight, but uh, do you have some good news to report? I, I received word from the TPOAM field business agent that they did ratify a TA, um, so I will get you guys copies um, of that probably tomorrow, and then we'll have it on the next agenda so that's good uh, to get that one done so we now only have one currently expired contract uh, and that's with fire and we do have a, a mediation session this week so hopefully we make some headway there um, other than that you know I, my traditional first meeting of the month anniversaries we do have three uh, three of the, the landmark anniversaries uh, two of which are in DPS with uh, Tony Sorrento hitting his five-year mark, and he's not here anymore, but he was here earlier. Um, Mark Hungerford also hit his five-year this month. Um, and then this year, or this month, will be Ashley McKinchak in my office, her one-year anniversary of being full-time. So oh, nice. those three. So congratulations to them. And uh, we do have a ton of other anniversaries, but not on the, the one, five, 10, 15 <laughs> kind of thing. But congratulations to everybody. Absolutely. So with that, I'm happy to answer any questions anybody might have. At the um, DPS meeting earlier, there was um, talk of a, of a contractor to do um, repair work at the DPS. Is that... Well, are, you, are you talking right now about uh, in the motor pool? Yeah, in the motor pool. Yeah. yeah. Um, we've often had to, to work with outside contractors for some of the different equipment. Um, over the last couple of years, we've worked a lot with Fraza. Uh, specifically on, on things like the street sweepers uh, due to the specialty nature of them. So we've had a, an ongoing relationship with them um, and they've been very helpful during this, this current trying time with uh, our mechanic being injured. What type of work are they doing? I believe they're doing some of the routine maintenance, are they not, John? It's typically a routine maintenance. Right now they're doing a lot of police department oil changes, stuff like that, and other uh, needed items that they can do. What they can't do, depending on if it's an Explorer, uh, it'll go to a Ford dealership. Same thing with our equipment. They're uh, helping us with our semi, our water repair van, our vector truck, uh, other dump trucks, pickup trucks, um, other specialty equipment that need attention 
need repairs, keep them functioning. We've got a, a, a stump grinder right now that uh, needs some work. So it's quite a few items. Any other questions? Yeah, how much did, do we pay them on a monthly basis? Monthly basis, I don't have that yet, but it depends on what services we have for them. But basically what it boils down to right now, we're paying them, it used to be $155 an hour for their, let's call it wrench work. Right now it's $135 an hour. And, it's, and all we have to do is provide them uh, 48 hours advance notice and they'll bring a mechanic in. Okay, so are, are oil changes at a competitive rate or are we having to pay for like $140 for the, for the oil change for the... No, we're, we're bringing those in house because what they do is more than what the, the corner oil changes have done. Uh, we did meet with uh, police chief, fire chief, and the police chief, uh, plus with some of my own experience, we've had problems, including the Lincoln Park uh, Department, where they've taken them to the neighborhood oil change, and things that our mechanics would check, they maybe didn't check, or they didn't complete the services at hand, and it's cost um, significant money. And Ray, correct me if I'm if I misspeak about not getting things done as they would have been done in our garage. So it's created equipment issues where they've had to do some major cost of repairs. But the answer is yes. Uh, we're having that done by our choice of Fraser because besides do, doing the oil changes and other things, they're also checking the tires, they're checking the belts, they're checking the rear end, the rear end dope, the transmission, uh, stuff like that that is typically not done at an oil change. Okay, uh, just, I would appreciate a breakdown of their, their charges and expenses um, for, the, for the work. Right, so the chair would like to see that also as council, I'm sure. All right, um, who is, I'm set. I'm sorry. Anybody else? Through, through the oh, chair. Go ahead. Um, I just want to uh, update on uh, the, the water leak plan. Um, Hennessy asked, uh, suggested, do we bring in a bring in a couple employees to do this? Um, have we gone anywhere with that? We're still trying to fill the currently vacant positions. Uh, we need to do that before we start adding um, new programs. Okay. I would suggest that. <laughs> coming weeks and then before September that they get the original group together and, and continue the discussions on that mm -hmm. find out what can be done through the chair yes sir your man sorry um, go ahead um so I was just wondering if I know Tom was speaking a little bit earlier but the broad may ban in place making with the other money that we put with the DDA and CBDG have you heard anything on that well, let's remember um, the CD, the CARES Act, and the ARPA are two different funds. Um, okay. The placemaking, the placemaking with ARPA is totally separate and hasn't been tied to the broadband. Um, we, I believe, we're starting to look at a study for the broadband, but we, over the last couple of weeks, we haven't gotten very far. Okay, I thought that we had, were putting something together for the broadband. <laughs> with the DDA also. So right, yeah, we're working towards it with okay. this being summer and vacation right. times. And then, you know, we started the thing where we're going to do the cleanup on Lincoln Park, and that's going to be a priority as far as, you know, the meeting we had with uh, right. the guy on that. Um, tell me some of the stuff we've accomplished. Well, I what I'll do is I'll prepare something. I was going to prepare an update for the entire strategic plan for I think the first meeting in September. Okay. And then the um the open money, the the projects and the start dates and what kind of movements are we having on that and what is the deadline to spend that money? We've got uh we've we've got a number of years still before that money's gotta be obligated. Uh, I think design for for the pump stations or Jim tell me that's ninety percent. Yes. 
That is correct, yes. We'll be meeting next week, actually. There's a scheduled meeting for the 90% completion. So that project, obviously, is taking up the majority of the currently um, allocated funding, those two uh, pump houses. Um, the animal shelter, you guys have awarded the uh, final design for that. Uh, City Hall windows is a project that's coming. Um, made any progress on the windows? As, as, I, as I mentioned in my email uh, about a week ago, that should be the RFP should be on the August fifteenth meeting. I know there was either right. Either it, well, and it's gonna the RFP is gonna be two options: one to be with the um, the historical recreation or. Um, a standard remove and replace. And the, the generator and the front doors? Generator, um, finally got word back today from the state that we, so there was an issue between the natural gas and diesel. Uh, the cost for natural gas was going sky high. Um, and so in order to make the money actually, actually work, uh, it was suggested to look at a diesel, but because of the grant we got from the state, we had to get confirmation that we could change it. And I just got that back today. So, so what's that? We can. can yeah. yeah, and so there should be an RFP on the August 15th meeting. In the front doors? City Hall front doors, that'll be once we get the windows going. Okay. And the DPS front of building, the doors and... You know what? I, last I heard, the doors had been shipped, but parts were wrong and... <laughs> Please, John. The doors at the DPS also include, uh, I'm going to say, safety glass in our front counter area. Uh, they were supposed to be in Friday to do everything. I was not in the state on Friday when I came in this morning. I saw that there was simply the frame for the glass. That was it. I've got to call into them because, as Mr. Krizan has already said, the first time the products were supposed to be in, they sent the uh, wrong component to match with the door. Now we've got a frame for the safety glass and nothing else. And I don't know uh, where, where everything else is. I've got to call into uh, the contractor with no return call yet. Thank you for the updates. Appreciate it. <laughs> for the chair, no please. Yes, ma'am. Good. Um, James, I know you've been on vacation. and Good for you. Um, so I'm just going to ask the open, newly opened businesses and recycling reports. Right. Um, so the <coughs> newly opened business report, we've ran into a snag because the person who has been putting that co together is actually on maternity leave. Ah. Um, the recycling is still an ongoing battle with GFL to get the information. Thank you. But yes. Through the chair, if I may. Yes, sir. Go ahead. Uh, just two quick things. Uh, I'd like to know: Do I need a motion that you come back to the council in 30 days with a rough idea when you looked into the manpower and what we're going to do? I mean, I don't know. I just want to. I don't want this thing to go keep going since 2003. And what I'm saying is, we talked about a lot of stuff tonight. And I haven't heard any date when we're coming back to give some resolves. So I need to know when we're going to have, like, have we figured out how much manpower or not? Have we decided whether we can afford it and where the money's coming from? Have we decided to hire temporaries for, for whatever to come in and do some of the stuff that we can do? And how is the process going for the uh, new hires if we're going to try to get more exposure to different elements to hire new people or try to? And we, I'm beating a dead horse. We talked about this. I want to know from management when you're going to come back and give us some kind of update. Long story short. I could probably provide an update in about 30 days as to what, that's, what's that's been done. That's fine. I just want to make sure it doesn't fall off the table. That's all. No big thing. The last thing I got is, did we discuss all the fire uh, protection inspections for all the buildings? Did I miss a meeting or something? That's I know we talked about the police department, but I mean all the other buildings that were inspected. We haven't done like a study session on it. Most okay. of, most of right. the issues in the other uh, buildings are pretty... Um, I don't want to call, but basically minor okay. maintenance type issues that we've been slowly working to address. Okay. Thanks. That's all. Thank you. Anything further? Hearing none, then we'll move on to the uh, 
department head report. Today it is library. Hello, Nicole. Hello. I will keep this short. <laughs> we, we just successfully concluded our six week summer reading program, and it's the first time since 2019 that we've been able to have in-person story times and weekly movies, as well as you know, having some special magic show and animal program. So it went really well. Um, our youth librarian is still tallying the final numbers, but we have had uh, over 100 participants finish the program. So that was going pretty well. Um, there will be a final party for the participants on August 9th where they can win some prizes and get some goodies. So I just really want to commend our youth librarian, Andrew Drummer, for doing such a good job on that this summer. Um, there hasn't been too many new developments since my last report. I think the one main thing is we are no longer charging a fee for the DVDs. Um, they are free to rent now for the one week. Um, and that's mostly due to the number of DVDs being released has gone down quite a bit with streaming, so we don't have as much of an expense there. And I think that has raised our numbers for circulation and made it more accessible to our residents. <clears throat> and I just wanted to remind people that uh, we do also, we're a distribution site through the Michigan Department of Health for the free COVID-19 tests. Um, you know, if anyone is in need of one, they can come in during library hours and pick one up. And we're continuing to work with them on that. Is there any questions? Nicole, I'm sorry, through the chair. Did you ask if she can extend yes, my <laughs> <laughs> Nicole, for the COVID test, do they have to be Lincoln Park residents? No. no. Okay. It's open to everyone. Thank you. Okay, so what do you think uh, you're looking to accomplish here in the next next year? Do you have anything that you're working on? Um, really, we're in the process of finalizing our fall programming. Uh, we really just want to increase the amount of in-person programming again now that things have opened up a little bit more and um, drive more uh, people into actually physically using the library. Our online numbers are great and we're starting to see the in-person checkouts go back up again as well. Okay, thank you. Oh, anyone else? Thank you, Nicole. Thank you. So we now have uh, citizen communications. <coughs> Hi, Leslie Lynch Wilson. So if you're wondering why my t-shirt says think food safety, it is because at this Sunday, August 7th farmers market at 1 p.m., we are doing a food safety event. It is also the start of Michigan Farmers Market Week, uh, National Farmers Market Week, which is August 7th through 13th. So our food safety event is going to be a demonstration of how to use a digital kitchen thermometer. Doing the demonstration for us will be Mark Rodriguez, who heads up the food service departments at Lincoln Park Public Schools, Southgate Public Schools, and Wyandotte Public Schools. We will also be di distributing free digital kitchen thermometers as well as the USDA magnet, Is It Done Yet? So we have a hundred of, of each of those, so we need you to come. And so you can get your digital kitchen thermometer and your magnet to put on your refrigerator. This food safety event is possible because Lincoln Park Farmers Market was one of 10 Michigan farmers markets that were awarded the 2022 Food Safe Safety Training and Education Fund Grant by the Michigan Farmers Market Association. So we are one of actually only two markets in our area um, southeastern Michigan, Wayne County, that got the grant. Um, in 
Detroit, the Hope Village Farmers Market would be the other southeastern Michigan one. And all the other markets are Carroll Farmers Market, Muskegon Farmers Market, Mount Pleasant, Ionia, Ypsilanti Farmers Market, Adrian, St. Louis, Michigan Market, and one up in Grand, Grand Rapids. So, um, so this is going to be a great event, and there's um, really great information. People can learn um, about how to use a digital kitchen um, thermometer for food, food safety. And just a reminder for people who aren't aware that the market is now in the vacant lot that we call Mellows Park that is on the east side of 4th Street between Arlington and O'Connor, between Park Restaurant and La Sultana, every Sunday 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. Thank you. Good evening to the council and the mayor. It's nice to be able to talk to you tonight. Um, I have a concern <coughs> that I will. We need your name first. Oh, my name is Nancy Houston. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, 1984 graduate, Link Park High School. Go Rails. Okay. <laughs> um, <coughs> so uh, I'm looking for your um, support or advice um, in a issue that. I see around the city most specifically um, on the street where my mother lives and that is um, one of the citizens puts a flag out on his um, fence that's on his that goes around his backyard but it faces the street and it's got the most offensive language on it um, the word that starts with F that I wouldn't begin to say here. Um, there are children that play in the area. There are families that are right there on the residential street. And um, I feel like we've heard a lot tonight about trying to keep the city nice, um, trying to make it a pleasant place to be. And it takes just one person. It takes one person to be a trendsetter. And it takes one person to set off a fire that could spread this kind of behavior throughout the city and that's a real concern for me. As a mother, as a person that I'd like to think has a little bit of good sense, um, I think it's grossly offensive. Um, as a veteran of the United States military, I'd like to add that there is a flag in the middle of that extremely offensive um, hanging that he has. Uh, when you started this evening, you pledged allegiance to the flag. You all have flags in front of you. Uh, the United States flag code, um, where it's not a law, but it's a guidance to how we should respect a flag. Um, it gives us a guidance to not drop it on the floor, to not fly it in the rain, to shine a light on it when we fly it at night. And the things that we typically know um, are the right way to fly a flag. Uh, this flag, in the middle of this... Um, hanging that the person puts out um, is made up to use two of the letters of that F word and then it addresses that to our commander in chief as in F Biden and then further goes on to say and F you for voting for him that makes that an attack against me in an extremely disrespectful way to use a flag so um, I've tried uh, I left a message about this once on the Lincoln Park Pride line and got no response I've called the police department Sorry, guys, you're probably sick of hearing from me um, a, a number of times. Um, and so I wonder from you, um, I, I would do anything for the families that live in this city, having um, been affiliated with the city since I was eight years old. That's almost 50 years, friends. Um, I, I don't want to see this city go that way. It takes one person to start that fire, and then it takes apathy to allow that kind of anarchy to take over. Um, so advice I would appreciate, uh, support uh, according to the city ordinance. I think it's Chapter 6, Section 3, I think, um, gives the council the authority um, to make decisions about signs and billboards 
boards and whatnot. I don't know how much it covers this. Uh, the police department has told me this is a First Amendment issue. Um, if he, if this person would like to fly a flag that said Joe Biden's a great big jerk, I think that would be fine. But he needs to keep the United States flag off of it, and it needs to have language uh, as such that I think that people should be comfortable with their children um, out in the neighborhood with. So um, if there's any advice you can give her. Why don't you bring our city attorney over then? See well, as council's aware, the police department always has good advice. They gave you the correct answer. There's not a thing you can do in terms of legislating or enforcing good taste. If that were the case, the tattoo artists and body piercing businesses would be out of business if you could do that. However, what you might do if you're a veteran, you know that if you contact the American Legion or Veterans Against or Veterans for Foreign Wars, the VFW or the American Legion, they have flag protocol issues that they bring about, and you might complain to them that they're using the flag in conjunction with a political statement which violates the purpose of the flag. The city is powerless to enforce that. It's powerless to enforce the words that you intimated were on the sign. As the Supreme Court has ruled in the past, you can't. You can't stop or legislate what they say. So I would suggest you start with one of the flag veteran organizations and let them know because if the fellow's truly or the woman is truly a veteran, they'll talk to them about their protocol and what to do. But on the other hand, you saw on January 6th, you can take that flag almost anywhere you want, do anything you want with it. So, although everyone here feels what you feel, which would be umbrage at the use of the flag in language that's not proper in the neighborhood, the second bit of advice I'd give you is that, in as much as not legislating good taste, sometimes the best thing you do is ignore it because there's only one on your block and not 100. Well, I'm just concerned that the one can turn into 100. And at what point do would we draw a line? It's Where it's could a we? Taste, ma'am. It's like the color of your tile on your floor. And I wish there was a better answer, but the police are correct. So, is there a challenge to the law that we could? Well, there, there have been plenty forward. of challenges. Nothing the city can do because you've lost before, Mayor. And there is the exact same case that you raise here with the Detroit police officer and a circuit court judge back when the mayor and the chief were young police officers and the use of that language, which you can now use in court too. So. Sad to say, there's nothing that can be done in terms of a challenge. I suppose you could you take up your own personal challenge, but nothing the government can do. That'd be interfering with free speech. There's penalties for infringement on the First Amendment. What about, I mean, we know that there are limitations to free speech in the event that, you know, the old example of yelling fire in a movie theater or something that could incite other people. This is one of those. And if he yelled fire I, in a crowded theater, you could prosecute him for that. I can't think of a case anywhere in the United States of America where you could stop that type of free speech, nor can you stop someone from having an election signed for 2020 and not being happy with the results, still having it on their lawn and it's old and blighted and rusty or the bumper stickers on the back of the cars, there's not a thing you can do. That's what I presume makes this country so great, is you allow them to have their speech no matter how dumb it might be. Or how offensive it is yes. to our neighborhoods. Right. That's very unfortunate, but thank you very much for our hearing. Okay. Is there um, anyone further? If you're coming up, yep. uh, my name is Dwayne Weeks. I've been a long time resident of Lincoln Park since oh, 1961 when my, my parents moved in when I was a year old. Been here a long time, saw a lot of business come and go. And we're talking about keeping things nice and clean in the neighborhood, which is great. Now I'm getting older, and you see a lot of things that really bothers you, I guess, turn into my dad. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I live over off of Mayflower and 4th Street. Now we have an ongoing problem with a lot of homeless people are collecting over at Kennedy Memorial. I got pictures and stuff of these people hanging out there, sleeping all night, bringing their, leaving their trash there. And one yesterday was over there by the liquor store, the Lincoln Liquor, changing his clothes right in the middle of the street. And today, when I got home from work, they were kicking one of the one of the home, you know the drunks out of uh, Lincoln Liquor. You know, this was just today, just kicked them out of the, you know, and, you know, there's kids and stuff that play around the neighborhood and all that, and plus, you know, like I said, it's our, you know, it's Memorial, you know, Lincoln, you know, Kennedy, I'm sorry, Kennedy Memorial, and it's getting trashy over there now. 
you know, I start off with one, then you see two. Now I count up to five of them over there. And it, you know, it's just not a place for homeless people be, you know, leaving their trash there and just, you know, hanging out there because kids go over there and stuff. And, it's, and we all know homeless comes around, crime goes up too. And, you know, we're all concerned about it. So we're trying to figure out what we can do about that. Well, we have been, um, matter of fact, I met with the. I'm sorry, I got my, my hearing's real bad. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. <laughs> Been a, long, been a long day. I met with the city man, not city manager, city attorney earlier today in direct conversation for what we're talking about there, what it, to the um, interpretation of, of loitering and, and what that means if if you can enforce loitering at, um, at the monument like that with uh, with all of the other items. Yeah. I've also been in contact with our, our chief of police in order to have that. Um, checked at night, the officers, because the park is definite. It, it closes at dark, and no one is is allowed in the park afterwards. Okay. And so enforcement action can be taken at that point. So if you see people in the park after hours, you can call the police department and report them. Yeah, which I have. Them? Okay. Yeah. I mean, well, they they should. But if you, if you call and you don't get response, let let me know. Could, my extension is twelve twenty five here. Okay. Yeah, because I, I want to keep because it's I mean it's it's very important to keep the um, sanctity I guess of the of the war memorial that yeah. that's that's there, and you you can't have it just turned into um, just where well, I think that it's just causing detractment of what the um, members gave to have their names on there. And it, it's a lack of respect for that. Right. I understand that the, the homeless have have issues; they don't have uh, places to go. So we need to work on on getting that situated, and then deal with uh, thereby then dealing with that. Yeah. But I think you are correct. There are a couple of the couple weeks ago, and then now there there are more. And right. So yes, yeah, it's up to us to figure out the best way in order to take care yeah, of it. When I come off from work, I turn right around at the light there, go, you know, make the U-turn, and you see it every day. Then you then you get an idea how many are there every, you know, each day. Keep going. No crates, garbage bags, shopping carts. And like I said, now it's going over to the, you know, they'll throw stuff at the, you know, uh, uh, Exxon Mobil there, they put their dirty clothes and stuff, but you know, just hide it out there by the dumpster. It's not in the dumpster, they're hiding it over there. And they sometimes they stay in that dumpster area, and people go by there back and forth to the gas station, walk in there, and you know, it's gonna be scary for some people. That's all. So, well, I appreciate it. Appreciate your time. You know, thanks for the time. Okay, sir. All right, thank you. Hello, everybody. I think I know most of the people here. I'm Darren Burns, for those that don't know me. Uh, my pastor, Down River Christian Center Church in Lincoln Park at Buckingham and Fort Street across oh, from Lincoln yeah. Shore. So um, I know there's been a, we're working with this one to, tonight to make sure, and I'll be at the further meeting, council meetings. Um, we're the church that is working with the Parks and Recs Department. We've taken on Ford Park um, to totally finish the rework, renovation, um, if you haven't had a chance, please drive by, take a look. We've made progress. We're not done. We're probably going to go as far as we can this year, but I think we'll have both ball fields done this year and, and basketball court. Um, we haven't charged the church, the, the city a thing, and we've been able to sell fun, get volunteers, and we've got a few other groups that I think they're going to help us do it. So I just wanted to make you aware of it. Anybody want to help us volunteer? We're ready to take you on. <laughs> and, uh, no, we're looking for people to finish this park. We, we, it's, um, and it's not just our church, so, you know, um, we have neighborhood meetings, so it's the neighborhood that is doing it. So let me make it clear, it's not our church was leading the pack, but we have engaged our whole neighborhood um, with this project, and I'm hoping it starts some movement in the city to get other nonprofits and neighborhoods to collaboratively work to transform the park. Understanding budgets are tight, you can't do it all by yourself, but if everybody chips in a little bit, we can make our parks the best in the city. So I just wanted to share with you what we're doing. And uh, please drive by, take a look. All right, thanks. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Anyone else? Not seeing any, then we'll move to uh, oral reports to the council and mayor. Council President Falcino. Thank you, Mayor. Good evening, residents. Visitors here today. 
in uh, the audience. I just want to wish uh, my best wishes to our city clerk, Kerry Kerr, her staff and volunteers on a successful primary day tomorrow, actually in less than 10 hours. And in light of that, Your Honor, that's all I have. Thanks, sir. Councilman Higgins. Uh, not much this evening, Your Honor. I again remind everybody the Garden Walk, August 6th. Um, Going to be some nice surprises for anybody who's at the Garden Walk. Um, I also like to uh, congratulate anybody and everybody who had anything to do with Art and Park. Um, this weekend was absolutely fabulous. Um, uh, the uh, hands of the city did uh, uh, immensely well there, and we did uh, well enough there that we can afford. We are going to be at the farmers market this weekend, and uh, I want them to know. Uh, and the reason I'm saying it here is that we're going to have a lot of kids prizes there, and have fun things for the kids to be there. So bring your when you come down for the food safety check, bring your kids with you, and let's have a good day. That's all, Your Honor. Very good, Councilwoman Tobin. Um, I'd just like to give a big thank you to everybody that was a vendor, a crafter, an artist, the bands, the sound company. Thank you for everything to help make Art and Park a success. Especially thank you to the residents and the, the guests from surrounding communities that came. It was a fabulous event. It was a fabulous weekend. And I thank everybody. It was just a lot of fun. Um, Thursday night, Wisteria will be playing at the band show, 7 o'clock. And other than that, that's about all I have right now. Oh, one more thing. Lincoln Park Days, August 26th, 27th, and 28th at the Community Center. Don't forget the dates. We'll be there waiting for you, ready. <laughs> After a long absence, we're happy to be back. So thank you. That's it. Thank you, Councilwoman Ross. Thank you, Your Honor. Maureen, we owe you a big thank you for Art in the Park. Thanks. So thank you. Yeah. It was fantastic. Um, I know that, Mayor, you talked about the 70-year celebration of the Little League. I just wanted to add, um, I got an email from our curator, and he did mention that um, if you're coming to play, that uh, please, you should bring your own glove. Okay? And that is, again, on August, Saturday, August the 20th. And I do... I have a save the date. August 1st, the Historical Commission is going to do a centennial dinner. That's all I have. I don't have details. I'm sorry, October. October 1st. I don't have. I'm sorry. October 1st. I don't have any details. I don't know what the, pri the price of tickets will be. I have. I really don't have anything else but the date. So I figure if I give you the date, You'll write it down and um, plan to buy some tickets and join us. We'll be at the high school. At the high school, yes. High school. At the high school. We can tell them that. Yeah. <laughs> well, I guess it's a return, right? They haven't done it in a couple years. They used to do their annual meeting at the high school, yes. Yeah. So th that should be nice, too. And Councilman Kelsey, happy birthday. Thank you. <laughs> Happy birthday. Um, I think that's it, Your Honor. Councilman Dupre. I want to say to the pastor, thank you very much for helping with Ford Park. Parks are one of my pet projects. Speaking of parks, this weekend on the 6th is the park cleanup at Marion Park, which is on the north end. It's the park that's behind Little Caesars on Southfield. That's how everybody seems to know it. And other than everybody get out and please vote, I have to say good night and God bless. Councilman Kelsey? Good night. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Don't move. Support. Councilperson Salcedo? Yes. Tobin? Yes. Dupre? Yes. Higgins? Yes. Kelsey? Yes. Ross? Yes. And Mayor Kynes? Best finish you've ever had. I know. See that? <laughs>